Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for another art story here on the I Paint Ideas podcast. I'm your host, Dao. I'm a visual artist and the founder of the Dao Art Gallery. And this podcast is, as you know, all about giving my art a voice. So today I want to share with you the story of my painting called The Culture. Now, truth be told, I was inspired by so many different things coming together to make this painting. I pulled on so many different threads that I'll be all over the place today, but I promise you at the end, it will all come together. Now, one of those threads in particular made my brain connect the dots and go, yes, I should make that. And that was a conversation with a dear friend, Janine Perlstein. She's a workplace culture expert, and I had the pleasure to interview Janine a couple of years ago for the Game Changer series about her brilliant work, and it is brilliant. And she had some things to say in that interview that just sent the sparks of inspiration flying. But it didn't start there. It started in ancient times, decades and decades and decades before, in 1985, when I did my very first oil painting. And that painting was called The Animals. And it was my, shall I say, a preteen commentary on people in society. And the whole premise was that people are animals, no better, no worse than any other creature on this planet, essentially driven by biology and most often in survival mode. And that painting, The Animals, was composed of human figures in different poses, very stylized and abstract, which is really all I do. And it was very much in your face. The composition was pushed forward um, to the surface of the canvas. Each figure was recognizable, simple, flat shape. Uh, There was no real interaction between those figures. And each person was sort of in for themselves trying to survive. It was very dark and moody and feeling dangerous and intimidating. Lots of texture though, uh, but the best word I have to describe it is that it was primal. Now, long story short, I made it when I was 12. Then I went to college, I came back to visit my parents, and my painting was gone. Come to find out, my mom had painted over it. And my mom is a very talented artist herself. She's super creative. She's genuinely your multi-hyphenate. She plays music, she makes art, she designs clothes, she makes clothes, For work, she did navigational system for missiles, uh, out of all things. So so she does all these crazy things. And we do come from a very artistic family, both art and music. And I do understand that creative urge when it comes and you just want to express yourself. So um, myself, I don't paint because I want to. I paint because I need to. So I totally get that. I'm not mad at my mom for doing that. Uh, However, I did ask her at some point about it and she was like who me what no never I would never do that and it took her about 25 years to come clean and admit to what she did but she did admit and it's all good there's a lot more creativity where that came from so this is not a problem at all so after that quote-unquote incident years and years and years later I was thinking about the animals and whether or not I should remake it because I do like it. I like all my artwork and I was thinking about should I remake it or not. Unfortunately, there are a few other paintings of mine that I made years ago that were destroyed one way or another at some point, never to be seen again. And I don't even have photographs of them in in some cases. And the same question came up for them as well. There was one that I talked about on this podcast in the episode called Stepping into the Future. I'll put a link in show notes so you can you can listen to that episode as well. But I was really struggling with that question. Should I remake those destroyed paintings? And if I did, how would I do it? Because honestly, I can't do the same piece twice because I feel like the energy is spent. It's gone. It's, it's it, That thing is done. Uh, so that was a real struggle for me. So that's the first thread. Um, put a pin in that one. We'll come back to it later. The second thread that helped me bring the culture to life was my concept for putting art on the continuum. Putting art on the continuum is a process that I use that takes original art as inspiration to create more art by moving the original across different dimensions like space and time and modality, basically transforming the original into more art. And the purpose of that is to have continuation of creativity. So you never have to be afraid 
of running out of ideas or running out of juice creatively. I also discussed this on this podcast in the episode called The Trends. I'll put a link to that as well. Uh, But the idea of the continuation of creativity is really um, a, a true line for my work because the purpose of putting art on the continuum is not just to create more art or not run out of ideas, but also to tell a fuller, richer story about the original subject or the idea of the original painting. And it lends itself beautifully to my work because I paint ideas and I have a story to go with each one. So it's sort of like art storytelling in a way. So this painting that I want to share with you today, The Culture, is an excellent example of putting art on the continuum. And you'll see why in a little bit. So those two threads were swirling in my mind, putting art on the continuum and then remaking the destroyed paintings. And it just so happened that I interviewed my friend Janine, who, as I said, is a workplace culture expert, and she helps organizations improve their results by improving their cultures. And in that interview, we talked about her work, we talked about cultures, different aspects of the culture and and stuff like that. And then I asked her, What is it like when the culture is actually working? This is what Janine had to say that made me go, hmm, I should paint this. Have a listen. Oh, my goodness. It is it is magic. It is true magic. And it's it's interesting because it creates scenarios where people will come to me on the regular basis and say, you're not going to believe what happened. It's like synchronicity starts to happen. And it's it's as if the universe starts bringing all kinds of uh, benefits over and over again. But the truth is, it's because people are operating together in in such an enmeshed way that they don't have to think through, oh, what's somebody going to think about the way I handle this? Or I'm worried about what other people think of me. They feel psychologically safe to make mistakes and to grow And it creates a ripple effect, not just in the organization, but in the families of individuals, in their relationships, um, in their ability to invite greater happiness into their lives. It really is, I believe, uh, a holistic improvement method. So when I heard that, the light bulb went on in my head and I thought myself, that's how I'm going to address the animals and turn it into the culture. So the culture is the result of taking the animals, my primal view of society, and moving it across time to a more evolved, refined, empathetic view of the human condition, separated by about, hmm, give or take, 26 years or so. I'll put a link in in show notes so you can see it. Uh, Actually, I'll put all the links for all the artwork that we're going to be talking about today in show notes. And you can access the show notes from this episode's description box wherever you are listening. So make sure to check it out. So after the interview with Janine, I contemplated how to approach making the culture, what it would look like, what it would feel like. It ended up as an oil painting on canvas, 48 inches by 30 inches. And as a callback to the animals, it is also a composition of people. But it's also very different. The animals painting was, as I said, in your face. Uh, The images of people were bold and intimidating and very flat. Uh, The culture is much more subtle and nuanced. It's still a composition of human figures, but they're interconnected. It's almost like finding oneness between humanity. And in fact, the composition comes from looking at the frequency of the Tibetan singing bowl Uh, that I have. The Tibetan singing bowl is essentially an inverted bell and it's used for meditation and I have this tiny one that is keyed into the Buddhist compassion prayer. Of course, this opens up another thread. Why was I looking at the frequency of the Tibetan singing bowl out of all things? Good question. Uh, And I'm glad you asked. I was actually working on a piece for another collection uh, and that collection is called the Art Notes Collection, where I take sound and I transform it into visual art. So the sound of the singing bowl was one of the pieces that I wanted to transform into art. So I would take any sound, really, uh, mechanical sounds, voice recordings, music, nature sounds, babies laughing, anything really, and transform them, uh, transform the sound into art. I recorded myself playing the singing bowl, and then I looked at the sound wave, the the frequency of it and the heat map of it, and then abstracted it without really changing the frequency to see what shows up visually. 
And I have to tell you, I'm always, always surprised. It gives me goosebumps every single time without fail. Really surprised in a good way because the intention behind the sound seems embedded in that frequency, in that recording. The first one that I did was for my daughter. It's called I Love You Beautiful. And in that image, that image revealed a young girl's face. I did a love note that my friend recorded for her husband for their anniversary and um, hearts popped up everywhere. I did another recording of my husband saying, leave me alone. Which, that's a whole another story that I'll get into on, on the episode about <laughs> the art notes. But that revealed like a really mean looking face. So, so it's always surprising, but, but in a good way. It's, it's so interesting. So that's what I was doing. I was turning the Tibetan uh, singing bowl sound into visual art. And that's why I was looking at it. What I saw in that image was um, basically a bunch of people coming together, standing in a circle, maybe around fire, collaborating, being together, etc. And that's what I pictured in my mind. When I saw that, I thought, this is an excellent composition for the culture. And it was very fitting because that frequency is um, keyed to Buddhist prayer on Mani Padmeham, which is a compassion prayer. And I thought it was really fitting to add compassion for each other into the composition of the artwork. The composition was very rounded, pushed further away so you can see more of the scene uh, and what was happening. It was not threatening at all like the animals was. It was more inviting. And then the next bit that I wanted to focus on was how do I depict these figures? And here comes another thread, of course. The inspiration for painting those figures in terms of lines, shapes, textures, and so on came from a lecture by Dr. Bruce Lipton. And he was speaking on the biology of belief. And his work is, of course, in stem cell research and epigenetics. And in this particular lecture, he was specifically talking about organ transplants and the instances where the transplanted organ is accepted or rejected and how our bodies know the difference. And he spoke about cells, human cells, having receptors and how they're coded to each person. And then he used this word broadcast. And that word stuck in my mind, uh, that word broadcast, like those cells have receptors and they're receiving this broadcast to let us know that it's us. Um, so the cells are not rejected. So in my crazy imagination, and I do have crazy imagination, I imagine this sort of radio wave coming down to each person, making them who they are, really representing the unique nature of each of us. So I use that as a jump off point to formulate the shape and texture of each person in the composition. And there are eight of them where the animal's painting was focused on the physical body, the physicality of, of that shape, the culture also incorporates the spiritual side. And then next came the color, the color scheme. The animals was very dark, ominous, scary, moody, as I said. And the culture is primarily light with splashes of bright colors. And when I say light, I mean light spectrum and like feeling of lightness. The animals showed the survival mode of each individual and the culture shows more creative, collaborative mode. My paintings, as you can tell, have a lot of symbolism in them and there's more to, to the culture than, than I have time to go into today. Too much symbolism, not enough time. But everything I put into my artwork has a meaning. There is a reason that I put it in <laughs> and I definitely think too much. So um, a lot of times there are things that you can't even see. Uh, they're in the background and they're covered. A lot of times it's layers upon layers and you can't even see the background uh, because, you know, I layered it so much. But if I feel that that's important to the story, to set the foundation, to set the stage, I would do it, even if you can't see it. Even if, if the final product, you can't see it. If it's vital for the story, I will put it in. As I said, there is more, so wait. <laughs> There is more, as they say. There is more. Going back to the interview with Janine, during the interview, I mentioned personalities. Organizations would use personalities to understand the people that work in their organizations. 
Janine circled back to that at the end of the interview with this really, really fascinating insight. This is what she had to say. Take a listen. You touch on something I just want to say about the personalities. You know, a lot of work is being done, gratefully, in organizations uh, figuring out where you lie with uh, within the personality structure of somebody else and how you can get along best. But this work takes it deeper onto the level of your beliefs. Personality is aligned with attitudes often, and it's in its can be um, changing based on external environments. I want to take that work deeper and looking more at your essential self and and doing the alignment there. It creates much more synergy and uh, and value for people. I wonder if you picked up what sparked my inspiration here. Two words. Want to guess? All right, I'll tell you. Essential self. When I heard that, I was like, I will definitely paint that. I don't know how, but I'll definitely paint that. I thought it was really important to incorporate this idea of breaking down the culture to essential self, to be able to do alignment on that level, uh, the way that Janine was describing, to create a positive culture. So I thought it was brilliant. And I was like, how do I paint that? How do, <laughs> how do I paint essential self now? The good part is that I already did it when I painted the culture. I just needed to put it on the continuum and transform it again. But this time, break it down visually into these building blocks that make up a culture, essential self particles, I call them. I ended up taking a photo of each of the heads of the figures in the culture and playing with them digitally to create a series that is now called the essential self particles. It's a series of eight because there are eight figures in the culture. So there is a series of eight essential self particles. And particles in the title, of course, is a nod to physics because physics also influences a lot of my art. So I added that. Each particle, if you follow show notes, you'll see it in there. So make sure you check it out. But each particle is unique and special, but it's made out of the same stuff, the same colors and textures and lines. However, they're all different, just like us. And there's one that is this very small and dense and clenched. And then there is another one that is open and inviting and all different shapes. Check it out. I think you'll like it. And then I wondered, what if I do an alignment? Because alignment was a big part of what Janine was saying. So what if I do an alignment now? What if I physically align the particles on top of each other with transparency so that you can see through the stack? What would that create? Would that give me another version of the culture? What would that look like? And to my great surprise, again, I saw a story unfolding. Each piece that I stacked on top contributed to a part of that story. And this amalgamation produced, at least in my crazy mind, a lovely idyllic scene with a parent and a child in front of their house with a horse and a river passing by and, and a tree and yeah, I see things in my paintings and then I tell a story about them. Sometimes it's intentional. As I said, there's a lot of thought that goes in. I think too much and everything that I put in, I do think through and there's a reason for it. And I always execute to that. However, sometimes some unintentional things happen. So that's really a very creative surprise that comes out of artwork and it's very satisfying and blows my mind every single time. But I'm always curious how other people experience my art. So if you take a look at all this artwork that we're talking about, send me a note. Let me know what your experience is uh, with, with those pieces. I would really, really love to know. It's worth repeating that the culture is an excellent example of putting art on the continuum. From that initial idea that people are animals that I explored in the painting, The Animals, to that painting then inspiring a new version of it, the culture, which takes a spoken word, the interview and the ideas shared in an interview and turns them into visual art, visual analog art. And then taking that painting, the culture, and breaking it apart into a digital series of eight pieces, essential self particles, series of eight, to then putting that back together 
and making it into yet another piece called a story. So it's really, really good example. It just keeps going. While I think it's telling a better story about the culture and about people. And it's also incorporating a lot of bits from Janine's work, which again is brilliant with a capital B. It's just insight on top of insight. You have to check her out. I'll put a link to her website in show notes as well. So so make sure to check her work out because it is, and I'm going to say it again. I know I said it many times, but it is it is absolutely brilliant. Creativity for me never ends. It only takes a word, a phrase, a sound, a conversation, or in my case, my mom painting over my artwork to keep it going. And on that note, I'm going to leave it here and I'll go make more art. I'm working on a new collection called the Autour Collection. It's a work in progress and I'll share it with you as soon as it's ready. But for now, I just want to say thank you so much for spending your time with me, for listening and for engaging. Check out the artwork that we talked about in show notes. And make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any of the future episodes and art stories. And again, I want to say how much I appreciate you, your time and your support, and I will see you next time. Cheers.